Welcome to This Week in Podcasting, where we discuss this week's most exciting podcasting news and tips, all in under 10 minutes. Episode 21 is provided by Sounder.fm, the smarter way to podcast. Let's get started. This week, we cover how RSS feeds can grow your audience, how much we love the new Pulitzer Prize category, the first all-podcast FM radio station, how to create beautiful podcast cover art according to our very own designer, and our random podcasting thought of the week. Let's get started. You may have come across the term RSS feed or wondered about that mysterious orange icon. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication, and it makes life easier for podcasters. Here's how. An RSS feed is similar to a social media timeline, only RSS feeds are more reliable. They collect all new content, like blog posts, news videos, and podcasts from brands a listener subscribes to, whereas on social media, listeners can miss new content due to algorithms. By getting listeners to subscribe to your RSS feed, you ensure they see each new episode. On RSS feeds, they can even categorize content by tags or folders. Pushing content straight to listeners can minimize the need for marketing. RSS feeds also make it easy for podcasters to grow their audience. By submitting your RSS feed to popular listener sites like Apple Podcasts and Spotify, each new episode you release automatically gets uploaded, so your podcast content stays fresh and you avoid fumbling with a handful of logins each week. Psst! Sounder gives you a free RSS feed when you sign up. We said it once and we'll say it again. Indie podcasts are on the rise, and not just because our team here at Sounder love listening to them, but because everyone loves listening to them. For starters, 54% of weekly podcast consumers report that they listened to an unaffiliated, independent podcast in the last week. So why aren't they hitting the charts? One, best of lists, and two, the sheer number of shows available. Podcast consultant Richard Davis explains, too many professional best of 2019 podcast lists produced by magazines, newspapers, and online sites ignored the remarkable diversity of independent and emerging podcasts, he writes. The snag is it isn't easy for journalists to listen to them all. Hopefully, this will change in 2020. For the first time, organizers of the Edward R. Murrow Awards and Pulitzer Prize Committee will include podcasts. What a win! Now, independent shows will be more thoroughly considered. Podcasting will be evaluated alongside radio, print, and television. We are so thrilled. Next up, haven't we all clicked on a podcast or two just because their cover art was compelling? Color, font, graphics. It can all be so exciting, but for some new podcasters, so overwhelming. That's why we asked our amazing, talented graphic designer for some tips on how to create beautiful cover art in our latest Medium post. To begin the process, he says, focus on keywords that best describe the subject of your podcast and use those as initial inspiration. Have a little brainstorm session with your team. Is your podcast about candle making? Keywords may be wax, scent, aromatherapy, natural, another jumping off point. Browse free image websites and see what stands out for you. For the rest of his expert tips, head over to the link in our show notes. Radio and podcasts have formed a solid relationship. Take Entercom, for instance. The radio giant acquired $48 million worth of podcast production companies in 2019. At the end of the year, they saw a return on investment thanks to their strategy of expanding radio host exposure on podcasts and vice versa. Radio even had a hand in teaching us to love podcasts. Where else can you consistently tune in to your favorite audio voice for news, personal stories, and banter? So it comes as no surprise that iHeartRadio continues to launch all podcast radio stations. Last year, we saw AM stations pop up in Allentown, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. But the latest, airing in Erie, Pennsylvania, is on an FM, one of the first in the U.S., From true crime to history, comedy to food, this station will offer a wide variety of topics every week, helping listeners discover new podcast content all through the power of radio, said Joe Lang, Senior VP of Programming. One radio programmer reported the stations were, quote, weekly programmed without any sense of love, careful crafting, or curation, unquote. We have hope that the audio giant is just working out some kinks. Last but not least, our random podcasting thought of the week. 
We asked the podcast community over on Reddit what aspects of creation they find most challenging. Time management rose to the top. One user even said she's burnt out from spending 10 to 15 hours on production in addition to her full-time job. So while weekends may seem like the perfect time to work on your podcast, they're also the perfect time to, well, rest. Consider taking at least one day a week totally off of everything. Plan a local adventure, mush into the couch, put your phone on silent. For more ideas, we link to NPR's episode, How to Have a Good Weekend. We have so much admiration for your hustle here at Sounder. We want to see you succeed in good health. So from our team to yours, podcast responsibly. Take well-deserved weekly breaks. That's all Sounder has for you this week. Keep on creating.